All right, hi again, everybody. So this is our last uh, lecture on Kierkegaard. And this is um, kind of what we've been building towards the whole time. So Kierkegaard thinks that there are three stages of human life. First, he thinks that we kind of, our default stage is the aesthetic stage um, or aesthetic stage. And so this is um, a life lived by way of uh, pleasures, right? We are constantly seeking out new things. Um, we want uh, things that please us. We want to uh, behold really pretty art. We want to enjoy uh, time with our friends, right? All of these things that are that are genuine goods, um, but we pursue them. And and so the question that we ask ourselves is: Will this thing? give us pleasure? Yes, no, yes, no, right? And then we pursue the things where we say yes to, right? And then we don't pursue the things that we say no to. But there may be like genuinely good things that exist that don't initially give us pleasure or that don't give us any pleasure at all, but for some reason are still really good. Um, so for, exa for example, um, uh, learning how to play piano, right? This is something that, that may not initially give us pleasure, but as we keep practicing, right, we get better at it and it, like, and then it's good. But even though it didn't initially give us pleasure, we needed the discipline to pursue the thing. And so the idea is the person at the aesthetic stage um, likely can't make that initial sort of jump because it doesn't give any pleasure at first. It's actually quite frustrating. So. Kierkegaard wants to say two things about, about this. Um, we, we can move, we can move out of, uh, from these different stages, move to different ones and move all around them. Uh, but, but when we're at the aesthetic stage, uh, we will often feel what he calls angst or, or a sense of emptiness at one's life and one's pleasure. So we often feel, um, kind of empty, right? When we've tried to pursue all of these things that give us pleasure, sooner or later, the party will be over. Sooner or later, uh, the pleasure would have ended, right? We can only eat so much birthday cake, right? And and then we're kind of, we've, we've experienced the pleasure and we're kind of left alone. Uh, the movie's over, what, whatever it is. Uh, and, and so we feel, uh, uh, kind of empty. We feel like it's over. We feel like we'll never experience that pleasure again. And that, and maybe, maybe we feel kind of a sense that, that uh, uh, we we're kind of feel a mirror of dying, right? Because we experience a pleasure and then it's over. And then we're just uh, kind of alone. And, and, uh, and so anyway, all this collection of experiences, uh, Kierkegaard wants to call that angst. But angst is actually really is actually a really good thing. It's an invitation to move into one of these other stages. Um, so, so supposing okay, so so that's angst. The other thing though is that Kierkegaard thinks, and this wasn't talked about much in the text. Uh, Kierkegaard thinks that uh, by way of of aesthetic beauties, we can come to move to these other. Um, uh, 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 stages. So for instance, if I'm looking at really beautiful art, right, I might, you know, I might see kind of through the art, kind of uh, into God, uh, we might, we might say. So for instance, I might get a sense when I look at a big waterfall, right, I might get pleasure from that, but I may also get a sense that there's something bigger out there than I am, something that like created and orchestrated all these cool things, right? And that might move me to a moral life, to an ethical life, or move me closer to God, which is um, Kierkegaard's ultimate goal. So next we have the ethical stage, which is often characterized by duty. Um, so for example, think of uh, Kant's categorical imperative. Uh, uh, this is somebody who acts for the sake of duty at all points in time, right? The reason why they act is so that they can complete their moral obligations. Uh, 
So this is what Kierkegaard thinks is like the middle stage or like the, the stage that's not quite as good as the religious one, but is better than the aesthetic one, right? Um, and, and, and so this one is, we're, we're trying to think about the morality of our actions in this stage. And we let that be the reason that we act as well. Finally, we have the religious stage. Um, and the religious stage is characterized by the kind of leaping or, or a kind of leap of faith into God, where you don't have any real reason to do so, but you do so anyway because you're acting on faith, right? So the religious stage for Kierkegaard is not the, um, the, the Sunday Christianity that we talked about in the first video, um, it's not this kind of superficial go to church, you know, and and then like, you know, bake a casserole and show up with a casserole, right? But it's this authentic, uh, uh, deep commitment to one's faith. So um, that's the religious stage. And so they kind of, they, all of these uh, uh, stages kind of have this upward progression, right, for Kierkegaard. Um, we can actually see these... Um, uh, each of these stages played out in uh, the movie with Bill Murray, Groundhog Day. Uh, Bill Murray starts as a person who is prideful and is characterized by his own pleasures. Uh, and then after he's lived the same day over and over and over again, he's kind of gotten a sense that uh, uh, what he's experiencing is really empty, right? He can only experience so much pleasure. And so he kills himself, but he, he always wakes up the next day, right? He, he wakes up and it's the same day over and over again. And, uh, and, and so even though he kills himself, he just keeps waking up and he keeps killing himself over and over and over again. So he has this experience of angst. And then like he becomes um, uh, uh, interested in learning how to play piano and all of these things like self-cultivation. And he begins to be a genuinely good person. So he makes it to the ethical stage. And then finally, like with like the, the romantic interest in the movie, uh, I, I, there's this kind of hint that he reaches the religious state. So anyway, so that's like an example. If you ever watch Groundhog Day, you can kind of look at it uh, from this perspective. Um, okay. So Kierkegaard thinks that we move between these stages by way of our own decisions. So we make the decision to become a moral person. We make the decision to become a religious person, or we make the decision uh, from being a religious type person to being like an ethical type person or uh, uh, an aesthetic type person again. So we can move up and down, but it's by way of our own choices. Um, so, and, and Kierkegaard thinks that you have to make the decision. You have to uh, only you, nobody can move you into a different stage of life, right? That's only you. So, uh, so we get this kind of sense of existentialism, right? Uh, uh, we have choices that are very weighty. We have choices that are really, really important to make. So uh, in this lecture, we talked about the three stages of human life and how we might move between them. And we talked about Groundhog Day too. <laughs>